I would like to thank you, the organizers here, to invite the Climate Service Center of Germany to uh, talk on our experience uh, with climate services as a climate communication channel. I'm working with Professor Guy Brasseur, which some of you might know very well because he's been a, or is still a, a fellow of the uh, NCAR here in Boulder. So our fundamental objectives are uh, to help society, which we, we talk about business and public service, um, to cope with climate risk and as well to see perhaps opportunities in this uh, field as well. So climate services, in our opinion, is to uh, act as an integrator, facilitator, communicator and community builder. So coming from Europe, we like to uh, introduce this um, picture here, which shows the bridge of Avignon in France, which only sp uh, half spans the river of, um, um, of Rhone. So on the one side we think the sciences and on the other side there's a society. And uh, talking about climate research results and uh, like even if we take approved uh, opinions or research results like IPCC, we somewhere, somehow just get to the middle of the, of the crossing the river. So we must do something to get on the other side. So what we think is to bring the offer closer to the demand. What do I mean by offer? Um, this is the information from the science side, like uh, the research on climate change, climate impacts and adaptation research, being working in a network of, uh, and synthesis of existing knowledge. And on this other side, there is this demand uh, of our target groups, our client, clients, which are decision, decision makers in business, politics and administrations. So what we have to establish here is a um, target group related communication and, to, and develop uh, demand or de oriented products and services. So coming back to this uh, picture here, what we need is to customize the information which is available in the, um, in the climate community to reach the users somehow and obviously even if the message in several decades of the climate science hasn't really changed a lot. Somehow we didn't really reach at the other side. So what uh, this picture show um, what is needed is what we call translational communication. We have this um, basic data coming from the, from the Climate Science Society, model output ob at, um, observations, and on the other side we have uh, the questions of applications to global, regional or local level. And we have as well very concrete questions on the impacts of uh, climate change. So what we can provide, of course, is like digital in information. We can, can talk about climate indices and downscale information and put them on maps and like in GIS formats. And uh, we have as well the integrated assessment reports like IPCC or some national or local uh, works going on. But as well, we need this customize information here, fact shield toolboxes, I come to that, <coughs> I come back to that later. And of course we have uh, in all the discussions time scales and uncertainty, uncertainty descriptions and risk assessment uh, issues as well. So coming back to this picture again, we um, might not have like a uniform kind of user community on the other side, but um, not here. So, but we might go different, have to go different ways to reach different user groups. So what is needed, again, we think, we've heard it uh, in this conference uh, already quite, uh, quite often, direct communication, like just communicate the climate facts is not enough. What we have to do to look jointly with our customers to, for, to find professional solutions on this topic so we come to what is what we call a co-production of new knowledge because we as being climate scientists we don't have the, the knowledge of the of their business community so we really need to have this insider knowledge to develop solutions for the um, specific customers but how to do that how to address that 
we come to a, a question of strategic communication. Sometimes it's good to address business networks. Sometimes we have to focus on business sectors. And what is very crucial is to find uh, multiplicators and sort of trailblazers that really uh, have a, an impact on their, on their community and uh, have the potential to uh, raise a lot of followers. And what we find as well, doing this work for about three years now, that it's very important to, um, to do personal communication, to address single companies and uh, re specify on their needs and to perhaps address as well single persons as a multiplicator like CEOs in the companies. So attributes of climate change, of course, is uh, providing balanced and credible cutting-edge scientific and technical information to engage a diversity of users uh, in the subject and to provide and uh, contribute science-based product products and services as well. And uh, I think a connection to, to science is very important. So I think a role of climate service uh, institutions is as well to strengthen observation standards and status stewardship and improve regional and local projection of climate change and to inform of policy options as well. So if we think uh, uh, in this picture again, what are some lessons learned from our experience? We think that the concept of climate services is still relatively unexplored. The international landscape is uh, complex and perhaps even uh, competing institutions are in the field. But the, the most important thing is that we have to, good service needs state-of-the-art science. So, um, but what we see as well that the scientific con community somehow is not sufficiently engaged. Of course, it's, um, it might be different here in your country, but we see that we have uh, a lot of scientists who do a real good job in, 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 uh, in their field, but uh, if they are addressed by media or by, by the public, some of them say, well, this is not our business to communicate really, so we have to work on that as well. Being a science, um, a climate service center, uh, we feel that we, ha we need to go have good contact to providers and, and services, and we need a good a high level of acceptance by the network. So if you're not regarded as being a key player in communicating science results, if you don't have the, um, have the science in, in your back, then you're just lost. Uh, another thing I'm, I want to point out here is the, that the top-down approach coming from global to regional impact modeling and uh, regarding physical vulnerability and sharing this information is not sufficient. So traveling on the, from the other side of the, the bridge here, coming from the, the users, uh, we see that we have to regard business market rules as well. It's uh, one of the things that we um, see is that the decisions for activities in corporations, they are taking on a very short time scale, which is completely different to the climatic change t time scales that we deal with. So many of our customers say, well, this is so much uh, ahead of our, or it's so far away from our decision level. What can we do about it now if we have to decide on investigate uh, in investments on the next 10 years? So this is um, a problem in communication as well. And we find that many customers, they still don't really know what kind of services and products, products they need. They just need that they, they just know that they need some very specific uh, products, um, but they can't really articulate what they really need. So there's a lot of uh, work on, the, on our side to do as well, to inform them what, what kind of climate change impacts um, might be important for them. And what we find as well, uh, I was very glad to hear from Dominique this morning, that it took them about uh, 10 years to really well develop, develop their service. We find as well after three years ourselves to be still in the, in the development phase of this climate service issue. So it takes much more time than we have expected 
to find out the needs and the, to develop value-added products for our customers. So what we uh, can stress as well, that the bottom-up approach is needed to start by questioning the users about their needs and their interests. It's not, not a, there's no way of just telling them what they need. So I've got another slide of lessons learned, with, uh, lessons learned which regard more the question of what we do in our uh, uh, service center. Um, we've already heard a lot, climate communication is more than just knowledge transfer uh, from the Climate uh, Research Society. Aspects from social economics and psychology have to be regarded as well, so multidisciplinary staff at service organizations is crucially important. And perhaps the key message what we uh, always um, find again and again is that climate service must be neutral and independent from political and financial pressures. Climate services um, include both um, sort of aspects of public service and being a um, market-oriented uh, company, because we have, if we if we address custom um, public service um, agencies or um, um, companies, uh, then we want to provide the, the the climate information for free. But as well, we need to compete somehow with other uh, consulting f um, agencies or to to address people in in the business sector. You need to. Uh, to talk their language, really, to be, um, uh, yes, to work with um, market-oriented tasks. So this brings me to the question of financing climate services. If you rely on, on public money, if you are happy to, to receive public money, then you have this uh, constraint not to duplicate any efforts, which might be difficult somehow. But if you're a business company with all the risks in the free market, uh, of course, you have the advantage just to be better than the rest and just uh, to go on um, on the free market. So I'd like to stress again that climate services can, can never be uh, done by just one institution without being uh, um, part of a network. Um, we have to to network, network with uh, several institutions to get all the right expertise from the right people. And now let me show you some examples of what we've been doing in Germany as sort of climate uh, communication projects. This is a network project that we've been doing. It, it is called Klima Navigator, which is climate navigator somehow. Um, this is a network of <coughs> public research institutions in Germany. The platform is operated by the partners together. You can navigate through the landscape of science in Germany. Uh, it provides an overview on current climate and adaptation research and provides as well climate-related topics for non-scientists. So this is um, an example of a um, work that we've been doing uh, on demand of the local authorities. Uh, we provide charts of climate change signals for Germany. The aim was to identify regions with robust climate change signals. We take state-of-the-art ensemble models, uh, regional, of cl regional climate projections, and uh, they undergo a three-step robustness test. They have to uh, have the agreement and sign significance of change, and they have to show low sensitivity in small shifts of time periods. So if we provide the, the maps then uh, of, germ of a specific um, climate parameter, so all the gray regions there, they are one of the tests of the robustness test has um, failed. Another example is uh, the climate fact sheet that we provide <coughs> in cooperation with the KFW bank, it's a big investment bank. Um, they are based on existing multi-model ensembles of regional and global climate change projections, and uh, they can differ in region, parameter, and time period. They include information on uncertainty and robustness of the project, projected climate changes, and what we we try to what we want to extend these uh, climate fact sheets towards um, 
uh, climate fact sheets for production sites and cities and to uh, develop climate impact fact sheets as well. So this here is an example of the city's adaptation toolbox that we develop for users in cities and local authorities. The purpose is to assist cities with adaptation planning. This is a modular system organized in these four fields, uh, thematic fields here, including um, having 24 modules in total. So some more topics uh, that we work on. This is adaptive management for climate resilience. We do analy we analyze the vulnerability, uh, give guidance for bottom-up processes, conflict management tools are set in place, socioeconomic modeling um, and um, is, is being used to, to give uh, guidance for special adaptive management questions. And uh, as well, we do a bit of work in the transfer, transfer of knowledge. Um, we organize uh, capacity development courses in order to minimize the regional vulnerability. And uh, we have, uh, yeah, adapta we talk about adaptation methods on local levels, priorities of adaptation methods, and decision support systems and models, and particip participative approaches and models during these courses. So this is uh, the end of my talk. I thank you again to, uh, for this opportunity to show the German uh, approaches here from Climate Service Center. And this is just a picture of the historic climate, the historic, uh, sorry, Chile House in Hamburg where we, where we uh, are now. And this is the group of people um, headed by Guy Brasseur here, you might recognize him on this picture. Thank you.